Hi everyone, and welcome to the Ogden Kids Art Break. I'm Michaela Harrell, Ogden Museum Educator, and I'm just delighted to be here with you today to look at a piece of Southern artwork and create our own art together too. Today, we get to look at the imaginative and intriguing work of Southern artist, Minnie Evans. Hmm. Just as another note, the Ogden Museum Online has created programming available to everyone to keep you connected to the South while we are closed temporarily. Each week we offer live programs plus social media and blog content to help you see the South virtually. To see what's coming up, please follow us on social media or go to our website at www.ogdenmuseum.org slash Ogden Museum Online. Let's get started. Evans, Minnie Evans, she was born in a log cabin in 1892, it was a long time ago. She grew up with her mother and her grandmother in North Carolina. As an adult, Minnie worked as a domestic at a household with a huge, beautiful garden. Minnie Evans spent lots of time in the garden, not just tending to the garden, but also relaxing and enjoying herself. When Minnie was in her 40s, about halfway through her life, she had a powerful dream. She woke up from that dream inspired to make art for the first time in her life. Wow. Her art came out as these organic shapes, right? That were inspired by dreams and maybe even the garden and things that she saw in her everyday life. Some people have called Minnie Evans' work surrealist. Surrealism is a style of art that blends realism with something more extraordinary or dreamlike. Let's take a look at her work now. Hmm, wow. What is going on here? I see lots of curvy shapes. I see three sets of eyes, a lot of bright colors interacting with one another. There are overlapping lines. It almost looks like to me there's an ocean in the background, the bottom section, or the bottom middle section. What else do you notice about this work of art? There's something important I want you guys to see. I haven't mentioned it yet. Mm, yeah, there's a mirror image on either side of this work. So when a piece of art is similar on both sides or exactly the same, it's called symmetrical. So Minnie Evans created most of her works with this idea of a central line axis point, and then she mimicked as best she could what was happening on one side on the other side. She created symmetry in these surrealist visionary drawings. What do you think that this was made from? Believe it or not, Minnie Evans did most of her work on pa paper with pencil and crayon. Here's a better photograph of the image behind me in my background. This is another example of Minnie Evans' work. Both pieces, by the way, are given the title Untitled, and they were made around 1970. Although this is a secondary piece of art, I included it because I wanted to show you the piece specifically on the left and how there's realistic figures in it versus the piece on the right, which is more abstract, right? It leaves more to our imagination. So I wanted to show you both examples of making a more realistic object with lots of patterns and designs and textures and colors or using those same techniques, but making something more abstract in your symmetrical, surrealist drawing. Let's get started. Do you have all your materials ready? It's pretty easy today. You just need a piece of paper, a pencil,
pencil and eraser, colored pencils, crayons, or markers, and a clear workspace for your project. Some things for you to think about when you start to make your work of art today. What shapes are inspiring to you? Are there any plants in your home or outside that are inspiring? What are your five favorite colors right now? And can you, as a challenge, I know you can, artists, can you repeat the same shape on both sides of the paper? Let's get started. You can see here, I began by taking a piece of paper and folding it in half, long ways, hot dog style. Then I took a sharp pencil and began to draw a curvilinear shape from the top of the page to the bottom. I added a few flourishes, but I tried to keep it pretty simple because I knew I was gonna try and copy the same shape on the other side. Once I completed the first side, I grabbed my eraser just in case, and I began to very slowly try and copy the exact same lines or very similar to what I had drawn on the first side. You can probably see some of my eraser marks. It took a few tries, but you can get it. Try and create a perfect symmetrical outline for your overall piece. Then came the fun part. Took my pencil and really dove into both sides of the drawing to add detail. I chose to keep mine pretty abstract, but I loved Minnie Evans' use of the eyes. So I put in two sets of eyes, some jasmine flowers from my garden outside, and a lot of abstract curvilinear shapes. I got my colors together, and then the last part, the part that I really enjoyed the most, was coloring the work of art. You can see I outlined some objects in darker blue or black, but then I also just left objects as they were and colored them in a simple color. Here's a quick little video of the whole process of how I did this, sped up. We are so excited to see what you create. Please, please, please email me an image of your finished artwork to include on our online gallery. You can send it to online at ogdenmuseum.org. Thank you so much for joining us again for another Ogden Kids Art Break. If you can, please help us continue to provide meaningful creative programming during these uncertain times by continuing to join us for these free programs. See you next time, Ogden kids. Stay safe and keep making art.